Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Prime Talk. Today we're having a special guest. We're having Michael Jackness. Michael is the co-founder of Ecom Crew, which is a platform to support e-commerce sellers. So uh, Michael, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Happy to uh, do this with you guys. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So I'm a little bit excited here because you know we just met just a few short moments ago. I see good things, I kind of hear good things, but it's always best to hear from the source. So today's episode is going to be all about the story of Michael Jackness. So you're going to share we, with us. Uh, we, we paid all those people to say those things. So don't, don't wow, read too much you, into it. Wow. <laughs> I, I love your budget. You know, something, you know <laughs> yeah, we got plenty. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. So uh, today we're really going to focus on your story. You're going to share with us. Um, who are you? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, how'd you begin your professional career station by station to where you are now? So I guess without further ado, let's jump right into it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, as the years go by, the story gets longer and longer. It used to be, you know, I graduated high school last year and that, that was about it. So <laughs> take <laughs> your time. I, we got all the time you need. No worries. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my whole life. I, I grew up in a, uh, entrepreneurial family. You know, my parents were owned some stores and stuff growing up and, but give us I, some names, give us some context. So what state are you in? Which town are you in this country? Where, I mean, which yeah, country? Well, we were, I was, I was in the Washington DC area. So I grew up in the Washington DC area, Northern Virginia and, um, lived there pretty much my whole life until we started like our first online business. And then, and then we, we left, which happened later on, but right out of high school, I started a, a consulting business doing, uh, computer consulting. Cause I mean, I was a kid of the, of the eighties and nineties and computers were just becoming prevalent then. And luckily, you know, I had a, a PC and I was playing around with that and was one of the few people on, on my block, at least that knew how to use one of these. So, damn so when you graduated and, high school, what year was that? 1990. Oh, Jesus, man, that's horrible. <laughs> 1990, 1994. Had to actually 1990, yeah. Wow, we're going to dive into uh, memory lane. I'm going to extract all these that's, memories. That's out of when you. you're, you know, you're getting old. I literally had to think about that. Uh, and there's a funny <laughs> story behind that. I'll tell you in a minute. Good. Um, but yeah, I graduated in 1994. So 1994, you graduate out of high school, right? You're in the you know Northern Virginia, Washington DC area, yeah. And you essentially open your first business, and it is com selling computer parts. It was uh, called Discount Computer Consultants, and what I did was just help people with their home computers. You know, I would go in and install you know word perfect for them or whatever the hell existed back then. <laughs> Basically, was, yeah, uh, the, the the fundamentals <laughs> of the PC that we all rely on today. That's early, early. I mean, not that early, early, early is eighties, I would say the nineties is a bit more mature, but still kind of, um, clunky. I mean, this uh, was, this was pre windows, disk, right? Yeah. It was all floppy yeah. disks. I mean, there were hard drives obviously, but all the software came on floppy disk or uh, actually at that time they were literally floppy disk. And then the three and a half inch disk came along and it's hard to even think back that, that <laughs> long ago, but yeah, I mean, uh, the screens were kind of green, you know, monitors, right. Yeah. And then, it, um, was, it was around that time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the three, eight, six, uh, four, eight, six types of computers. It was probably, right? yeah. Right in that, in that time, you know, some, uh, some VGA monitors came out. So we actually had, uh, we actually had some color screens by then they weren't just Amber. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it just, you know, computers were foreign to a lot of people, you know, and, and, but they knew they wanted one in their home. And so I started just like, through friends and you know, people kind of knew that I was into, into this stuff as a kid. I just, it was a hobby for whatever reason I was into that and a bunch of other hobbies as, as well as a kid. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew so there was you, a, an avenue You opened a there. business instead of going to college or this is before you yeah. went to college, you went to college at the same time. What was the dynamic there? I opened the business instead of going to college. And mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't even say instead of going to college, just going to college was not ever really an option for me. I mean, you know, it just, didn't have the grades, didn't really care about school. I was already kind of like a, an entrepreneurial hustler type mindset. Um, so hold on. You know, so that's your first major business, but you know, up until the age, you're, you know, the moment you're 17 or 18 years old, what were you doing with what that you can identify as being an entrepreneur back, back in those days? Well, you know, again, my, my parents owned some, some stores and stuff. So growing up, I was helping with those things. And uh, yeah, I, I think that, the, the moment that I kind of, it, it wasn't just, just that, but it was kind of married with a, a moment that I really remember. I was going to go get a job at a computer store, a uh, local computer store in town called Comp USA. It's actually a pretty large yeah, computer it, store. It's still around, right? I think they might still be around. I'm actually not sure. Um, yeah, it's a chain I'm store. A, I think at least, yeah. I'm a Mac guy now. So yeah. <laughs> things have changed a lot in my life. 
but uh, yeah, I went down there and asked uh, if I can get a job and they offered to hire me at like 525 an hour, whatever the hell it was. It was, you know, something ridiculous. And uh, I was like, you know what? I, I think I can do better on my own. I think I can, if I can get just two hours a day of work at $20 an hour as a consultant, you know, finding people that then I I'll be doing just as well and then have more hours to fill and, and, and make more money. And so that was my, I, I actually can remember back to that exact moment. Uh, it's weird. It's, I think it's the only other time in my life I applied for a job, uh, which is also kind of weird. I, I didn't take the job, but I, I did apply for that job and, and was awarded the job. But I find uh, yeah. that a little bit interesting that you mentioned in your school, you want the highest grades, one is that sophisticated, but when it came, the moment for you to understand the mathematics of things, pretty simple to you. I can yeah. do this for 525, you know, slave myself, or I find something that is unique that I can probably excel at and, uh, uh, you know, make a better living and have a better setup for myself. And that compelled you, that pushed you. And I guess from that moment on, you didn't really uh, look back and you just opened the business, you know, consulting and, and helping with uh, you know, the computer industry in its uh, kind of early days. Uh, it's pretty interesting how you were able to have yeah. that, at least that, that, um, mindset of, uh, putting yourself in the right direction. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of, you know, I, I was always really strong at math. Math was never a problem for me. Uh, the grades in school were more from a, I was just bored, you know, and, 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 and have, I have ADHD and it's hard for me to sit still hard for me to focus in the class that, you know, public schools taught to the lowest common denominator. Uh, like I would get that two plus two equaled four, like let's move on to the next thing. And they're still, a half an hour later, trying to draw chalk on the board, explaining why two plus two equals four. And I would like fall asleep in the back of the class and get in trouble. And <laughs> no one could quite understand. I mean, this is, you know, back at a time where these types of things weren't really diagnosed. I didn't have, you know, I was in public school and this is you know, where I think that, you know, now that I'm older and, and understand the way the world works better that, you know, had maybe I'd been born to a, a really affluent family and was in private school and had better attention. Life probably would have been very different. But, you know, in the public school system in, in the 90s where this stuff wasn't, you know, identified, my dad come home, my dad would hit me for falling asleep in class and say, pay attention, son. And I'd be like, I, you know, I'm bored. And like, you know, it just, it was a, a different time. And yeah, uh, different tools, just the different way that mindsets. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I, I want to believe as a society, we have, uh, you know, uh, adopted more and more tools and more and more ability to, to enhance the experience for the youngins who are in the educational platforms and systems. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, between you and I, we can probably agree that, you know, learning is a never ending process, right? A hundred percent system. Yeah. But after that, it's really all up to you and you got to have to channel yourself to the right uh, places. Of course, that's what part of the things you guys are doing is uh, fo heavily focused on educating, you know, entrepreneurs and e-commerce sellers. We're going to get to that. Okay. So I want to start moving the storyline along. So 1994, you're in the you know computer business. What was the next station for, you know, how many years were you, you stayed in that position until you found the next track? Yeah. I mean, I was doing the computer thing for, for quite a while, actually. So I had this consulting business and started, I started migrating kind of from home user customers to some business customers. I got lucky that one of the uh, home customers I was working with also owned a business. And so like went and started working on their stuff in the office and kind of realized that, you know, business owners had more money to spend on this type of stuff and, and also got more value out of having computer technology in their offices when they were so doing you pivoted from B to uh, C to B to B or add another layer of B2B. Mostly, yeah. mostly B to B. Yeah. I pretty much eventually got rid of all the home user stuff and went mm -hmm. to business. And uh, eventually I ended up getting a client that was doing basically the exact same thing I was doing. They were another consulting company. They were a little bit bigger and they had this client that was in Northern Virginia where I lived and they were based closer to Baltimore, which is geographically only like 30 miles away, but in Washington, DC traffic, it's like 17 hours away. <laughs> and so they were just like, will you go take this client for us, you know, and we'll pay you your, your standard rate or whatever. They were marking my rate up, which I was fine with, um, and, and go help them. And I was, they were just one of my stops along my, my weekly or monthly journey. And eventually they offered me a job, uh, which was, really interesting because I, I always thought that like that would never happen i would never want to take a job, a job as an employee or just a contractor as an employee yeah as a mm -hmm. full-time employee they were they were a growing company and they they were like we need a full-time mic Got it. and <laughs> they offered me this job and the money was like was really good but it wasn't quite as much as i was making doing my own thing but at that moment i was starting to get like kind of burnt down and frustrated doing my own thing mm. You know, the hustle driving, a little bit, yeah. The hustle. And what year was that was, when they offered you the job? Or, that, you, was you that was 1990. That was 1998. So four years into the mix, yeah. you know, a job opened up. You took it. I did take it, yeah. And and I'm glad I did. You know, one thing I 
I, I thought that it would be a learning opportunity. And that was one of the main reasons I did take it. And I thought, you know, it, it's time to kind of just get into something a little bit more stable. I'm getting a little bit older. I was like ready to like kind of do my own thing. And I wanted that stability. Like it was difficult to like get an apartment to rent with the way I was doing things. And yeah, it's, it's a moment where, stuff. you know, just... you, you, you're hustling and it gives you some uh, oxygen to have some stability, at least exactly. economically and, and on your schedule. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in how many years did you stay in that position? I stayed there seven years. It was a long time to go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, from 80, uh, 98 until what, 2005, 2000, 2004 is when I left. 2004-ish. Yeah. All right. So yeah. were you stayed in kind of the same position or you, uh, you grew into in, inside the organization. Yeah. So while I was there, I mean, things, I, it's funny. I, I had the same title from day one to the day I left. I was never, you know, in corporate America, typically people are so title hungry and all these different things. <laughs> I just never cared about that. I was like, you know, call me anything you want, as long as the pace keeps on increasing and responsibilities are increasing and I'm learning, um, I'm going to be happy. And that was definitely the way it was. I mean, it was a really fast growing company. Uh, for me, it was super exciting to be, you know, a part of all of that. I was a fly on the wall at basically every moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I got you know, promoted to the executive team. I got more and more responsibility. My responsibilities grew outside of IT. You know, I was a part of like the whole operations of the business. Um, so you got immersed. You got immersed in you know with the tremendous experience, uh, tremendous yeah. know-how, uh, track you know track record of you know performing well and in the highest levels and standards. So that's a great package to leave with. So yeah. let's bounce into 2004. What was your next station? Yeah. So, I mean, while I was still working at this job, the entrepreneurial bug was still always there. You know, the side hustle type thing was always there. I was actually uh, selling stuff on eBay, you know, in 1996 area, I started doing that when eBay was just kind of coming to, to be and was like a power seller on there. So I had this side hustle doing that. And that part's important because what ended up happening is like the uh, thing I ended up doing the next business I created was kind of launched off of eBay, which was I was uh, really into playing online poker. And, uh, one night I'm just like playing online poker and I find out about affiliate marketing. They had a, a link on the bottom that said affiliates. I didn't know what the hell that even meant. And it said, if you send one to nine players a month to us, we'll pay you $65 a player. If you send us 10 or more players, we'll pay you $75 a player. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. It's funny. I can't remember what I had lunch yesterday. Like 20 years <laughs> yeah, ago. Yeah, pivotal moments. Moment. Pivotal it was moments. a really big yeah, moment. Milestones. Yeah, milestones. Yeah. Humans tend to kind of absorb. But what year was that in that when you saw that, that poker was, opportunity? That was 2000, end of 2003. Got it. So you're still with that company in 2003. Even company, though you had a, a customer, you know, online selling in your belt in 2003, this poker opportunity presented itself through yep. affiliation. And what yep. you do? So yeah, I, I was like, you know, I, I don't know that many people. I'm not going to be able to, I can get 10, 15, 20 people maybe to sign up, but I might, I always, I'm thinking bigger, like no matter what it is, thousands, like, thousands, thousands of players and millions of dollars, you know, kind of immediately, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Go big, and, go um, home. Yeah. And so I was just like, well, let me maybe take this eBay asset that I have and try Platform. to figure out a way to like marry it to online poker. And so what I did was I created buy it now auctions for a penny to give away a free product, which was a the most popular poker book at the time. And as a, the payment, instead of paying any money, you had to sign up for online poker and it worked pretty well. Um, you know, I got it. Hold a, on. What's, what's the, what's the package you buy for a penny? You, you, a you, book, it was an eBay, book. an eBay auction. That was the, the, the cheapest you could do was a penny for buy yeah. it now. Right. And then in the terms of like payment, it was like you, in order to get this free book, basically, you have to. You were able go, to create click. that in the payment. So basically, you were able to connect uh, the, the the checkout process to. Uh, this, I guess you built this funnel where they. Uh, it it they wasn't register. a part of the checkout process. It was, you know, it was, it was on the, the page. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. you know, when people would read, like, I'm going to get this book for a penny. Here's what I have to do to actually get the book for a penny. And then after they completed their auction, I would send them a link. Not everybody did it. Some people complained and eventually eBay ended up shutting it down because it was ultimately against their terms of service, which I uh, didn't realize at the time, got it. but it got me started, which was the important, the important thing. Cause like you need that initial traffic to, to get you going. Yeah. So you, and, you, uh, you found immediate traction by doing, you know, creating this combination until it got busted, yeah. uh, you know, for, for TOS. Got it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and that took a while. It took like three, three months, four months, maybe for eBay to finally shut it down. But by this point, a couple of really important things happened. Number one, I contacted the poker room and I was like, is what I'm doing okay? I want to make sure that I can offer something for free to, to incentivize them to sign up to, and they're like, yeah, that's fine. 
And I also asked them like, can you give me more money if I send you a lot more traffic? And they said, if you send us 200 players in a month, we'll pay you $200 a player. And I was nice. like, holy crap, like that, that's <laughs> now we're, now we're really getting, you know, obviously some substantial money. And so again, the way my mind thinks it isn't just like that I can make more money per player that I sent them, but I can give them a better gift and get even more attention mm -hmm. to this. So we started giving away, or I started giving away uh, a set of free poker chips instead of a book. And then if you think to like, but what'd you do on eBay and our website, this was still on eBay Got it. Uh, at, at this exact moment. So this is now early 2004. If you can think back to, to that time, poker is like the biggest explosion in America. Everybody wants their own set of poker chips to like have their home poker tournament. And I'm giving away a set of poker chips. People want to also play online poker. It was like the match made in heaven and nice. it took off like wildfire. Uh, eBay ultimately ended up shutting our account down. And it's actually, it's sometimes funny just how you create your own luck or you get lucky in life sometimes. But um, we had been working on making our own website because I felt like that that was the way to go. It wasn't that I thought that eBay was going to shut us down. I just thought that like, I wanted to have my own platform. I wanted, I knew some stuff about yeah, search You can have the experience. You can just, you know, create your brand identity doing the, that. Absolutely. Just uh, makes much, much more sense. Yeah. Yep. And so one night at like 2 a.m., we launched this website. And at this point, I had partnered with my cousin to come help me do the fulfillment because he was a, a DJ on Washington, D.C. morning radio. And so he had a 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. shift. Slot, and, when yeah. he, and when he got done, he would come over to my house and package up all these poker chips because I had a full-time job. I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the demand. Like when it was 10 a day, I would just go home and do it. But now we're doing a hundred a day or more. Wow. And I just couldn't even remotely keep up with it. So he was coming over and doing that. And he calls me at like, I had just gone to bed at 2 a.m. launching the website. He calls me at like five something in the morning on his way into the radio station saying like eBay just shut our account down. And so like, we had this like three hour overlap of like, <laughs> we got like it was like we had just just launched this website and so what wow, we did so really uh, perfect timing yeah perfect timing i mean couldn't have been more lucky amazing and uh we emailed all of our customers to that point from ebay and said look yeah, i just want to remind uh, you for context so it, what's interesting with ebay i don't know it's just today i assume it's still the, the, the situation they actually give you access to their email so this is your yeah. client especially on paypal you see the email address you're able to harvest yes. that and yeah. you launch a website and boom, you, you reach out and say, hey, remember you bought with me? You had the experience. And that's, now, now we have a website and so-and-so, right? That yeah. was kind of the, the, the dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what happened. So I sent an email out. And this is back when people actually opened up their email because there wasn't really spam and all that crap yet. <laughs> um, and so we sent an email and said, look, uh, we just launched this new website. Uh, we have another poker room that we've added. So even though you've already signed up, now you can go get another set of poker chips or a different free gift if you want. Or we also launched an affiliate program of our own, we'll pay you $20 for every one oh. that you send to us. And yeah, that was you just branched like, out. Yeah, you yeah. branched out. And so we went from like doing a couple hundred of these in a month to a couple of thousand. Cause like, I mean, it was like overnight. And this was in like uh, April of 2004. 2004, got it. Yeah. I put my notice in to quit my job on July 1st. <laughs> it was pretty quickly thereafter that uh, it was time to move on. I got it. Okay, so 2004, July 1st, you gave a notice. You got your online, um, you know, website, uh, uh, you know, growing uh, the poker uh, communities. But this is really kind of a, you know, it's all e-commerce related. You know, this all this commerce is is happening online. Yeah. Um, okay, and what was the next station for you? What what happened next? Yeah, I mean, there were some big moments in in in, in there. I mean, first of all, we decided to leave Northern Virginia. My then girlfriend sure. and I, but then I, in, you know, I proposed to her before we left. I was like, if I'm gonna ask someone to move across the country with me, I should probably put up or shut up. And so I, <laughs> I, I asked my girlfriend to marry me. Uh, we moved to Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Um, which is, was like the center of the poker universe at that moment. Total sense. Yeah, um, it makes total sense. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we were there for about a year. And then we ended up moving to Costa Rica because we felt oh, wow. like uh, we could save on some taxes down there and we could have uh, cheaper labor and kind of use that as our home base. It was also kind of the another center of the poker universe from the perspective of there were a lot of operators down there and we felt like being there would be would be good for us what year did you go there so we we left um we left northern virginia in 2005 went to uh, to las vegas, las vegas for a and, year and, and then we went to costa rica in 2006 mm -hmm. and stayed down there for three years and we went to the cayman islands for a year uh, and by 2010 i was like i'm 
I'm burned out and kind of done with poker. And so at the end of 2010 uh, is when I, well, in the middle of 2010, I went to my partners. At this point, we had, you know, got a couple of business partners involved. I was like, look, like, I, I think I'm done. Um, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Let's do like a six month plan. By the end of the year, I'd like to be out. Um, I don't want to be, I don't want to give up my ownership necessarily, but I, I'm willing to give up some equity to have someone else run it. I just want to be like, just send me the check. You know, I don't want to even know anything that's going on. I want to be completely removed from this thing. Let's do this over the next six months. And so that's what happened. So at the end of you, 2010, you were in the Cayman we Islands. Going, that's when you're in the Cayman Islands. And those we had actually islands? come back to Las Vegas at this point. Like Got it. We, we were in the Cayman Islands. We made this decision when we came back to Vegas um, because I was like the last known address that we had. And we felt like that was a good place to go back to. At that so moment. let's do the route again. Uh, Northern Virginia into yep. Las Vegas for a year yep. and then three years, Costa Rica, one yep. year Cayman Islands back yep. to Las Vegas. Yep, that's exactly okay. right. Yep. Got it. Okay, and when you land in Las Vegas, that's when you created a six-month track for you to, I guess, kind of start heading out into a new track, uh, which is out yep. of poker. Yeah, and at that point, I didn't really know what that was going to be. I just knew yeah. that I was burned out. I didn't really like the people necessarily in the industry, and I just, I, I know I wasn't going to retire, but I knew that I didn't want to do anything for a while. Um, and so we bought an RV, um, a big 45-foot bus, and took our dog and our car and started driving across the country for, the country. for a while. Wow. Yeah, nice. for, we did that for a couple of years. And while we were doing that, I started, you know, getting a little bit bored. There was only so many waterfalls you can hike to and, <laughs> you know, new restaurants you can try or whatever. And uh, yeah, limited amount of, uh, not limited, but you know, after you're hiking a few trees, you know, you get the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. it's not that I don't enjoy doing that. We still go out and do those things, but I was doing that every day. You know, it was just like, and it's cool. Like, don't get me wrong, but I was still, I was in my thirties. I mean, you know, yeah, you need it, balance. Everything in life is balanced. Yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Then you just, you find a lot of joy. If it's too much of anything, exactly, you, you lose that joy, uh, the, the purity of joy uh, of yep. that thing. Uh, I think and that took a while to figure out. I didn't quite understand at that time that like, I was like a pendulum. I would like swing way too far in one direction. Then I would come back and go too far in the other direction. It would, and then this just kind of repeated over a while. At least it gave you the ability to discover. At least financially, you had the ability. That's that's important. That's yeah. great. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You discovering yourself is huge. So, how many years that's did important. the RV journey ha happen until you were able to start balancing the act? It was a uh, well. It, the RV journey didn't balance anything. I was like, that was gonna like, get me bored, <laughs> and then I went too crazy in the other direction eventually. But as we were RVing, I started thinking about like, you know, what do I? What skills do I have? You know, what's a good way to you know start making some money again? And so I started buying, buying domain names. You know, when it, we had done a lot of SEO and affiliate marketing and content marketing as a part of poker, but I was like, let's get into doing a similar thing, but in a quote unquote, more legitimate business. Cause like people always rolled their eyes when you told them uh, that you were doing online poker, especially if you went to a bank or something, you know, they didn't want anything to do with it, which was frustrating because we weren't doing anything wrong. They just didn't understand that. Um, and so we bought, yeah, you're experiencing uh, the online, I guess, uh, gambling, if you like, uh, it was experiencing in those days what uh, Las Vegas was experiencing in the 70s and 80s. Exactly right. You know, but now yes. it's corporate America, it's Disneyland, you know, big money's there. Hundred percent. Or you're, oh, you're in the online gambling, you're worth a gazillion, whatever it is. Like today, if you're in that domain, you're crushing it. Nobody can even almost visit a casino without having a mask or all these difficulties. That's right. It's boomtown. But yeah, just to have some context back in those days was wasn't as glamorous as uh, you know, probably it is right now. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably way different. I don't have any desire to go back to it now because it's just kind of like I've done that thing. But, yeah, you've been there. Um, you know, it was just something you know, I, I felt like I could start buying these domain names. They were good investments. And eventually I could develop affiliate sites on the back of that. Uh, and we did. You know, we started developing uh, some some pretty when big affiliate When you say we, you yourself or your wife or you know, my partner? wife and I. Yeah. At that time, yeah. it was just us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was super simple easy lifestyle, you know, you put up a WordPress site, start putting some content out. Um, definitely life was simpler in that, in that moment. Uh, we, we own WordPress hosting.com. We owed and this is what year when you guys uh, launched that? Oh, uh, this would have been like 2004 at this point, you know, we, so for, uh, for, you know, for about four years, you, uh, or th 2014, 14, sorry, right. 14, so about sorry, from wrong. 2010 to 2014, you were kind of rumbling around. Yeah. I mean, it was, thing, it was well, it was the end of 2010. So we had 2011, 2012 was kind of like, we weren't doing a whole lot. Started buying some domain names. Then I started actually developing them and, and found some pretty instant success doing that. I mean, you know, it just, we had, we had the knowledge, we had the assets and like the capital to like 
infuse that and, and get it going. Right. I mean, it was just, it was, it was the perfect combination. Nice. And so, you know, these affiliate sites were doing very well. Um, and one day while I was still, you know, not, I, I, at this point, I wasn't having to work tons of hours because, you know, this, these are actually relatively lifestyle type businesses where you can, uh, you know, just makes it a little bit later on, a little simmer, and then you come yeah, back around. It's okay. Yeah. It's not. It's like a crock pot. You don't have exactly. to monitor the the pot every second. Exactly. That's a really good way to really good way to put it. Uh, and I was actually out on a hike. You know, kind of joking about being on hikes and tree, hugging trees. Uh, and I was just like, you know what? Like, I, I think a couple of different things here. First of all, I think that Google eventually is going to come down hard on sites like this. I just feel like you know, I, I was being honest to myself that you know I didn't really add a lot of value to the world by what I was doing. I, at least I felt that way, uh, even though I was working hard and I had, a, you know, a, a skill set, I felt like I could be doing something better to serve mankind uh, through this process. And one of the, the sites we had was treadmill.com. And I was like, you know what, I want to, I want to get into e-commerce. I want to start selling people treadmills directly. Instead of having them come to treadmill.com and like read one of my reviews and click a link and end up on sports authority and wonder what the hell just happened. <laughs> because like most people don't even understand how the internet works. I was like, I want to sell them the treadmill and we own treadmill.com. Like every treadmill manufacturer is going to want to work with us. I was a little bit arrogant and cocky and <laughs> just didn't think, you know, uh, about all this. That, that's a 90s dynamics. thing. If you own something.com, that's it. You own it. But yeah. today you can just put the brand name.com. You're good to go. But yeah, good to go. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we learned a lot of lessons through all that. It didn't work out quite the way I thought it would, but it got me into e-commerce, which was, was the important thing. And, you know, again, that was 2013 and, you know, it's now 2021 and I'm still doing the same thing because I, I absolutely love it. And there definitely is a burnout factor to some extent, because there's, there's a lot of challenges dealing with e-commerce that I didn't have to deal with in the affiliate world. But uh, so let's I, separate uh, the track. So I, uh, I want to make sure I'm getting the elements correctly. Sure. So you have uh, you know, kind of a business buying domains and reselling it or renting it. That's one track. Well, we didn't, we didn't rent the domains. We just bought them and either sat on them ah. or develop them guys. Yeah, all right. So if you sit on them, that's pretty, you know, you can resell later, but if you develop them, you develop content, which leads to other websites and that creates yep. affiliation. That's yep. one kind of a track. And the other track is where you buy inventory, you sell it. You are actually yep. a retailer. Well, I mean, when we started treadmill.com was a drop shipper. And so we didn't buy any inventory mm -hmm. that, that came later with the next, the next website that we did. Um, and so, so take us there. Yeah. So take us there. So you're you're in retail and in drop shipping. You know, you go to all these brands or manufacturers. You put it on treadmill.com. Yep. Order comes in. You you send them the notice. They they, they ship it out. Uh, yep. So then that developed uh, into the next website, which or, or they that? or they didn't ship it out, which was <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the challenges, right? That's the setbacks. The setbacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so after a couple of years of doing treadmill.com, I I realized. A, I really love this challenge of doing e-commerce. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was something different. I, I love learning. And I felt like, you know, I wasn't really learning anything new in affiliate marketing content. It, 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 by that point, everybody had figured it all out. Um, but selling treadmills was tough. I mean, you're competing against the manufacturers themselves who sell them on their own website. You got map pricing. They're the ones that they're drop shipping for you. Half the times you place the order with them to, to ship the thing. They, then they tell you, oh, sorry, we don't have any. They have to go back to the customer and explain, can you get into a different model? The thing would show up damaged. It would show up late. They'd miss their delivery appointment. You know, they returns, refunds, returns, yeah, all these other things. It was just miserable. And right. the majority of the people that bought from us were unhappy, like over fifty percent. And that drove me insane. We were making right. money. It was a decent business in terms of making money, but from my personal well-being, in terms of way that I am as a, a human, I hated it. Like I just could not take another phone call. Of someone being upset, knowing that yeah, they were too right. much heat, too much heat. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't settle well with you. Awful. Even though the money is okay, it does compensate maybe financially yeah. on it, but you know, you had to once again balance things out. Yep. And so I hired someone to help. I was like, you take the phone calls, but I'd be in the same room because we got a little office, and I'd hear. And and agitated, I like, yeah. I'm like, you know what? We got to like at the end of at the end of uh, the the holiday season of 2014. You know, we did. We went through the Christmas season. Now it's like January 1st, 2015, and I'm like. I am done with this business. We got, we've got to sell it. Like, I just, I can't do another day of this. And we got really lucky. I mean, we ended up selling it in under 30 days. Like the thing was just, was gone by the end of the month. Nice. Um, and for more than we were expecting to get for it. I mean, we, we ended up doing, doing pretty well with it, but we had this one employee that I really loved. Like the guy that I just mentioned that I hired, he did a great job. Uh, you know, he was, uh, 
his, his by the way geographically you were based in las vegas you're back home at this point we actually had moved to california we were in in san diego san diego Diego. Mm -hmm. you still there today nope we actually came back to vegas now it's it's hard (laughs) to keep track of us Uh, we (laughs) we spent uh we spent uh catch me if you can i don't know if you saw the movie with yes i love that movie i'm not i'm not unethical like that guy but i am i am (laughs) no uh, this guy's doing a great service to the world he works with with the fbi and he helps out now he does now he does yeah Yeah, now he's you know he's helping so yeah there's always uh, that shift between the negative into the positive right Uh, always the opportunity to make that shift he did it and obviously you uh you're doing it now with you know with the treadmill uh, we're in that part of the story so take us yeah yeah yeah, so I mean, we we end up selling treadmill. And, you took uh, the employee. What was the story with the employee? Yeah. So mentioned. the 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 guy that bought it didn't want the employee, mm-hmm. and I'm a big people person. And again, he he was doing a great job. And anybody that's ever been in business knows it's hard to find a good employee oh, yeah. or good employees, you know, whatever. And he was like the only guy that I had been working with at that point. Like I, you know, we were running just a really thin staff. I didn't want a complicated life or business. And, uh, you know, he was, his wife was a stay at home mom. They had a, a challenge kid and two other kids. And so she had her handful hands full with that. And, uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to find something else to do in e-commerce and keep this dude. And so You're saying I'll find, I'll find another boat to, 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 to ride on and have him as throw, you know, my, my, throw him on the boat. Yeah. Have me my, uh, my co-pilot, nice my you, skipper. Yeah. And, skipper. uh, so I got on biz by sell and I found this business called ice wraps. And uh, I negotiated with the guy, bought it, flew to Michigan to uh, get all the inventory and let the people that were currently working there go because uh, the business was was failing. It wasn't like- What was this and, business? What is this? It's a, a business called IceWraps.com that we still own today. And it sells hot and cold therapy packs for various injuries or post-surgery stuff. What's it called? One more time. We'll put it in the show, like show yeah, us later on. Ice, yeah, IceWraps.com. So do a and, W, uh, IceWraps.com. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great purchase. I mean, we've we've done very well with it. We bought it for for fifty thousand dollars. That included the domain the domain name, you know, iceraps.com, iceraps.net, org, all that you know, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. The website, all the uh, you know, all the uh, past customer list, and some inventory came along with that. The so whole that, infrastructure you know, came into your lab, everything. but um, okay. But it was you, a it was a struggling it business. It was yeah. a business that was that was losing money. The guy, it was a fire sale. The guy like was like, I can't keep the lights on for another month. You know, so like whatever I can get out of this thing, I'll take it. it. And it met all these other things that I wanted at this point. Like I didn't want to sell. I didn't want to do drop shipping anymore because I wanted control. So like you want to own this, your brand, you want to own your customer, you want, want to own, own everything, all the whole ecosystem and, yeah. and, you know, and have faith in it, enjoy it. And I guess now that, you know, these packs are helping people, it, it, there's more joy into it's the a lot. It's been, a, it's been a really great business. It's been and then now we've created our own brand on top of it, which has done really well. Got it. And so, yeah, I mean, I flew up to Michigan through all the inventory in a truck. I have to ask which part of Michigan, because they used to live in Detroit. So I just have to ask. It was, that. I flew into Detroit and I drove south and west towards Ohio or toward, yeah, towards Ohio. Toledo um, area, right? The Toledo area? No, well, no, it was like, uh, I have to look it up on the map. It was a small little town. It had like no one worries. traffic light. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was. I got you. Shout out it to was, Michigan. Well, we did it. We did it. It was right. about 90 minutes southwest of Michigan, but or, or a southwest of Detroit, I mean, but still in Michigan. Got but, it. But close to the Ohio border. But it wasn't close to Toledo. It wasn't near anything. I mean, it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Middle of nowhere. No, right. you picked nowhere. up a business in middle of nowhere. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. This is 2015, uh, right? Two, this Early. is J- January of you know, end of January 2015, uh, February yep. 1st, 2015. Right, and it's still on the business today, you know, six years after. And, we do. Uh, yeah. It's been a, it's been a great little business. Um, man, it's been from a business standpoint in terms of investing and buying a business, the best thing we've ever done. I mean, it's worth well into seven figures now. Um, you know, it's just, it's just been a great, it's been a great pickup. Um, and I, and I enjoy the business, you know, it's, it's, it's a good business. Awesome. So it's really good. You know. Okay. What else, what else transpired of, you know, in those uh, six years, that's it. This is where it starts and it ends in e-commerce. No, there's a little other, bit more to it now. Than there we go. Yeah, Take us so there. Uh, you know, in typical Mike Jackness fashion, as I said, there's the pendulum. And so I kind of like, I got addicted to this e-commerce stuff. I mean, at this point, like I started doing well. Uh, and I was like, you know what, this is, this is something I want to build into like into a really big enterprise. And so we started uh, either creating or buying other brands. And so we started uh, a brand called color it. Uh, which was coloring books for adults and, and all the mediums for that. Uh, it turns out that grandma age type people love the color. You know, it's like a hobby. They I like the color. A, I will pick that up. Yeah. It's, it's a fun it's hobby. Therapeutic. Yeah. It's a therapeutic. Very therapeutic. 
Yeah. Um, and that business did incredible. We started a business called Wild Baby, which is uh, some stuffed animals, uh, heatable stuffed animals. For, How do you spell that Wild Baby? How do you spell that? W-I-L-D-B-A-B-Y. Wild, wild Baby. Wild Baby. Got it. Yep. Um, one of the other domain names that we owned uh, back from when I was talking about, you know, a decade before this that we had purchased and we never developed was uh, tactical.com. And so Tactical? we started tactical.com. So we started developing that as a content site and now have made a e-commerce brand to go side by side with it, really marrying like the old disciplines with the, with the new, right? The old content SEO marketing type stuff with physical products. And so now that's kind of interchanged in, into that intertwined. What kind of um, products though for tactical? You guys you know, tactical gear. So tactical flashlights, gloves, uh, shovels, you know, things that you would you know, use in a, a, a bug out uh, prepping Got it. And for the most situation. part, um, all these are you selling on your own website, your own domain, your own dot coms, right? Correct. The tactical yeah. gear and, and Amazon. We sell, we sell on Amazon as well. Right. So all these brands have a presence, their own presence on Amazon, correct? Yes. Yep. Got it. Yep. And their own and storefront. So, you have a storefront for each one, or it's one storefront that embodies all the brands. They're 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 actually separate companies. We keep them very yeah. separated yep. for sure for a very very. Yeah, for liability and Various branding reasons. reasons. Yeah, yeah for just sure. all kinds of different things. They don't really fit together. You know, baby stuff with yeah, for ice sure. packs with tactical. Yeah, they're just kind of random brands. The coloring, uh, the coloring brand we did sell. So like having them separated now makes some makes it a lot easier to to sell a brand if we want to you know sell a brand. We've now purchased another brand, and so we kind of have an umbrella structure that has these different companies. And the goal was to kind of to cycle through some, you know, because I think that there's opportunities to get business to, to a certain point where they make sense for us to, to sell them, have a, have a good exit and then bring another brand in that is a good business, but hasn't checked the boxes of the things that I feel like that we're the strongest with. Right. And so I think that you know certain things that we've learned really well over the years, like we're really good at sourcing from China because we've been doing that now for quite a while. And a lot of people are worried about, you know, just don't know how to do that. We're really good at, at, at content marketing and SEO. So if they you know, have a great brand, but they don't have any organic traffic and we think that there's opportunity, that's a good checkbox. Maybe they have an Amazon presence, but they, uh, we think that we can do better. Maybe they aren't doing email marketing yet. Yeah, you, we, so you, you, see, you, you see businesses that are doing okay, but if you check the boxes that you know how to do very well, it becomes an amazing business, right? You right. Turn and around. so the idea is for us to throw like jet fuel on the fire. They go. have a great business with a great fire going. We throw we throw some jet fuel on it and you can see it from space. You know, it's like, ah, that. that's what we want to, that's what we want to do. And, uh, <laughs> like a small it's, question it's about Amazon. Sure. So when you entered in, what was the year, the moment you entered into Amazon and what was the reason? It was just to supplement your com, or was it, this was like, take us to those moments. Uh, yeah. Those this is where it's always funny how life works out and the different journeys. And you can, I think if you look back at life, like everything's like a connect the dots moment. For sure. Sometimes you don't really realize. Those calling it books, you got to connect the dots. You know those you ones. Connect you the connect dots. And exactly. Then you have a nice picture. So <laughs> right. Just to, to borrow from your uh, old business, yeah. Yep. And so the dot here was the ice wraps dot. We had bought ice wraps, as I mentioned, and it was ninety nine point nine percent on its own website. It was icewraps.com was where all the sales came from, but they had tinkered with selling on Amazon, and so we got an Amazon account that came along with the business. And about six months into owning ice wraps and redoing the website and getting the traffic back and seeing some explosive growth. I was super excited about, I was starting to get a little bit bored with the business. I didn't really know what else I could do to make it better at that point. Like I was actually looking at throw other, more fuel. And, and like you said, you know, there just wasn't really any more fuel. Like I Got did it. it, you know? And, and so I was looking at another business to buy uh, at that moment, but I also simultaneously was like, well, let me look into the Amazon part of this that they never really did anything with. I didn't know anything about it really. Um, and it turned out that that happenstance was probably the best, well, the best thing that ever happened to us in terms of e-commerce, because now like our business is 90% Amazon and all the explosive growth has come through that platform. So you're saying if I got it correctly, Amazon was in your back pocket. Uh, is it, you know, when you bought the whole business, yep. you know, it wasn't really, really being utilized, but the money was, it, um, it became the 900 gra- uh, pound gorilla. So you're doing 90% today from that moment on and the rest of your brands, because that is a dominant force that you cannot avoid in e-commerce. And, you know, the dot com, they do what they need to do. They're maximized, they're optimized. And that great combination of balances is a great uh, thing to have as a business. As yeah. A business owner, at least, or an yeah. entrepreneur. It's been, it's been awesome. And now, right. now there's a lot of struggles with Amazon. I mean, that's another whole story, maybe for another day. But, um, you know, I think 
the opportunity that existed in 2015 with this wide open lane of Amazon has now gotten way more crowded. It's way more difficult. Amazon's gotten, you know, I think there's like this business life cycle I saw happen also on online poker where like companies need you way more than you need them. You know, they're desperate to get more people to sell on their platform and fill up their warehouses for them. So you can pay to, you know, help them supplement building warehouses and be the first person to sell an ice pack on Amazon. Cause they haven't even filled that void yet right. versus today. It's the opposite. Like they can give a crap about you. Their warehouse is full. They have 20 other people selling the same product. And now you're, you're just uh, a fly uh, that they want to fly on the wall. You were working <laughs> that, that other company mentioned uh, back in the, you know, the early days. So I got you. Uh, all right. So let's take us to the moment where I guess you will start to invest more to the content or e-com crew. What's that? What, what's the, yeah. give it, what's the birth of e-com crew? How did that happen? That actually was born in uh, 2015, similar time that, that I bought ice wraps. Um, when I bought ice wraps, I also joined a community called e-commerce fuel, which is a great community. Uh, e-commerce really, fuel. E-commerce fuel.com. Field um, or fuel? Fuel. F U E L. Got it. Um, and it's a private forum, private community for e-commerce sellers, for seven-figure e-commerce sellers. And so I joined this community and was talking about a lot of the stuff I was doing. And they were kind of like all blown away. And to me, what I was doing was like the same thing as breathing. I wasn't doing anything in my <laughs> mind that was difficult at all. Yeah, it wasn't unusual. Right? It wasn't extraordinary. Yeah. And this is because a lot of e-commerce sellers say, I'm jealous of them. It's always, you always have, I think, strengths and weaknesses, right? In, in anything in life. And so for me, like I was just super impressed that they could create products and branding and invent things and, and just have, you know, have that, but they had no idea how to do content marketing or how to build a website or, and so the things that were so simple to me were amazing to them. And so we're just, yeah, was different great, yeah uh, your core competency and different fundamentals, which uh, it kind of supplement each other. That's mm -hmm. why you have that community environment. Yeah. Yep. And so that's actually when we started Ecom Crew, because I was like, you know what, I'm going to start documenting what I'm doing. Um, how are you, you know, doing I, it? What, how I'm doing how's it, it working? All these things. Yeah. Be very transparent. You know, it, it was, I wanted to do something different that wasn't being done at the time and still really isn't being done actually. I mean, most gurus or e-commerce people don't talk about their products or their brands or don't even really sell themselves. And so it was, I'm going to tell everybody about everything I'm doing. If you want to go copy and sell ice packs too, fine. Best you of luck. Yeah. You, you feel you're in a, yeah, you, you, you have your position, you have your competency. You're not even, yeah. you don't even flinch. It's the same way Bill Gates can talk about Microsoft. It's not right. really easy to create you yeah, the go, next Microsoft. Go develop, uh, go develop, you know, windows. Or go Spindles handle the pain he handled all these years. Yeah, <laughs> right, it's, right. it's a lot of pain and anything that you do, it's and nothing is a copy paste uh, mechanism. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and I was also, you know, I'm older at that point and more secure financially and as a person. And I, I legitimately love helping people. And so it was just a great way to, to document what I was doing. Unlike an online poker where everybody was like clamoring over the same exact customer. Right. Like, I mean, if you own an online poker affiliate website, like everyone wants to rank number one for online poker and everybody is a very dirty industry. They'll back over your mother and their mother and then drive over them again, just to make sure they're dead <laughs> to like get, to get that position yeah. from you. I mean, it was oh, like, wow. it was a very, very dirty industry yeah. where in e-commerce, you know, it's just like a trillion dollar marketplace or industry. And almost certainly the person you're talking to doesn't sell gel packs or ice packs, right? They're selling dog chew toys or home gym equipment or alcohol or whatever the hell else, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can, and even if they do sell gel packs, I'm never going to sell all the world's gel packs or ice yeah, packs. The right? marketplaces like are tremendous, tremendous for every, happen. every type of product category, a niche, whatever it is, it's a tremendous world out there. And e-commerce yeah. is only what less than 20%, at least in the United yeah. States of retail. Yeah. Uh, even through uh, the pandemic. Can, yeah. So, so it's we can really, growing, but yeah, we can yeah. bet that it's going to go to 21, 22, 25%. Every percent is a humongous opportunity for so many entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot of space for everybody to grow. So why not pass pass it forward and, and support yeah. the growth of sellers? And that was, uh, that was my, my mindset. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start doing this. I don't know what will come of it ever, you know, one day. But I know from past experiences that whenever you have knowledge that someone else wants and you keep on putting out good content over a long period of time, good things come with it. And I was like, literally the only conversation I have with myself is terms of like, let's just go do this. And so that's what I did. And so for like the first year was just writing blog content, started getting some following, some traction. Then we launched a podcast, uh, which we're still doing. We're close to 400 episodes into it as we're recording this. Wow. What um, year did you start the podcast? Uh, that would have been, I think a year later. So it would have been 2016. 
Wow. Had, Kudos you know, to you guys. Millions of downloads at this point. And I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's really amazing to, to, to look at, you know, how it, how it's grown. We have a, a community now and people pay to be, you know, behind a, a paywall to be able to have access to my partner that I do with. And I, um, and it's just been, it's super enjoyable. Because you want to like, give a little shout out to your partner and tell like, us who he is or how'd you got to connect with him? Yes. I mean, he's actually someone I met through that e-commerce field community. And that community has been amazing. It's opened up so many doors, um, which is why I think it's so important to be a part of a community or a mastermind of some sort. Uh, as a part of being in that community, he was one of the other guys there. Um, you know, I felt like I'm not really a, a very strong writer. Like I don't, I, I can do it, but like, I just don't, it, it, I, it takes me for, it takes me longer than it should right. to put out written content, Like he's really good at it. He's prolific. Like he, and he doesn't really like doing on, on mic content, like he'll do it, but it's similar. And so like, we're just really great together. Cause I, I yeah, do all the podcasts and I do all the videos and, and for me, it's like no big deal. Like for me to have this conversation, I can do it with like almost zero prep and it's no big deal. Like I, I, I know this stuff in and out. Cause like, what's his name? Uh, I'm not sure I caught the name. The name? His name is David Bryant. David Bryant. Yeah, nice. David Shout Bryant. out to David Bryant. Yep. Yeah. He's awesome. And, and he's also in the trenches. He has another e-commerce business. You know, we both have the same morals and you know, moral compass. We don't want to be telling people this is super easy and you're going to make a million dollars overnight and just buy our course and you'll be a millionaire. Like we're not like that. It's the total opposite. We, we are very real. Like this is hard. <laughs> it takes a lot of capital. It takes a lot of patience. Um, it's incredibly rewarding. I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world, but like, this is not easy in any way. Yeah. This and is a profession. We'll this is, you. yeah, this is a profession. This is a game for a professional. So if you're serious about, yeah. you know, like if you're going to go to medical school, you know, you're going to, you're choosing a profession. You got to, right. oh, I'm going to be rich overnight. You're going to have a whole, you know, work to do to get to, to a position where you have a sustainable income from this. I think yeah. the same mindset should be addressed to e-commerce. No, Absolutely. You know, maybe Couldn't even more. more. The complexity is, um, probably more superior because it's such a boomtown industry. Yeah. All right, very good. So if I got it right, the, the, you guys are focused right now, of course, you know, on, on, on your own private label brands, on the dot-com, on, yeah. the, on, the, on, on the marketplaces, but also on the education and content level where you're supporting the sellers uh, with Ecom crew. Uh, all right, let's do a little crew recap to see what we got so far so we can package <laughs> the episode. You know, at 94, you start your own business after high school, you know, yep. uh, with the computers. Uh, and then you did that for about four years. So in 1998, uh, you were able to score kind of a job or it, the job kind of sucked you in into this corporation <laughs> yeah. uh, all the way to about 2004. 2004, uh, during that time frame, you uh, you pick up on the affiliate marketing and connect that to the you know online poker um, 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 uh, industry, which had its kind of renaissance online and it was booming. And you did that till about 2010. Uh, you also circled around. Uh, I lived in a few places all throughout the years. You mentioned in uh, Northern Virginia, Las Vegas, Costa Rica, uh, Cayman Islands and back. And then 2010 until 2014, kind of roaming around, you know, enjoying the world, taking it easy, hugging trees and water, watching waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. and 2014, uh, you know, um, I guess e-commerce itched or entrepreneurship bug itched and you bought, you picked up a business uh, selling, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the ice wraps uh, uh, and, and, you know, these are, you know, for consumer products. Uh, you also picked up the employee uh, um, that you have from, uh, no, you, you, you got General. an employee or you, Huh? From treadmill, the, the employee was right, from yeah. treadmill. So the entrepreneur, which was like right before the treadmill era, but yeah, the employee came with treadmill. Yeah, right. So uh, the treadmill was a kind of tough business. That's where. Oh, so you started treadmill two fourteen, or that was the 2013. 2013 for a kind of year, and then you picked up, uh, you know, the ice wraps and things yeah. start clutching well from there. Yeah. Uh, and then from two thousand fourteen until our days today, you were able to kind of replicate your success with, you know, um, having your own dot com website and. And your own brand and selling them in marketplaces. In addition to that, connecting to uh, you know a community, and from that community, you created kind of your own community, uh, the ecom crew community, where you're supporting sellers uh, with your partner, and you're involved also with education and seller support. So, did I get it all correctly at this point? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. It feels like I haven't done much. <laughs> no, you did a lot. <laughs> it's a tr tremendous story. I appreciate yeah. the, you know uh, you sharing that. I, I I've learned a lot. It was, it was fascinating to me to learn. Okay, so now that we have all that, I want to kind of focus on the two last things, and we'll get to sure. this quickly. Um, you know, if somebody wants to connect and find out more about you guys, give them a handoff. And the last thing will be, what is your message of hope and inspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there? Yeah. So place to connect ecom crew is, you know, it's kind of the central point for all the e-commerce stuff. E C O M C R E W dot com, ecom crew on iTunes, ecom crew and all the social media handles. We got it all consistent. Uh, if you want to email us support at ecom crew dot com, uh, that'll find its way to me. In terms of inspiration, um, you know, I, I would say that uh, it, 
there's a caveat to it. Of first, you need to make sure that you you really want to be an entrepreneur. There's a lot of one entrepreneurs. You hear a lot of you know stories about people wanting to quit their job and go do these things. Not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur. You know, we society needs uh, people at every level. You know, I, I talk about all the time. Like, I mean, everything you do in your life not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Otherwise, like the whole society would collapse. You know, you, you go to the grocery store, someone has to stock the shelves, check you out the register. You need a waiter to bring you food at the restaurant. You need a doctor to, to, to check up on, you on these different things. But certain people are cut out to be entrepreneurs, want to be entrepreneurs. And so in terms of inspiration for those people, um, I would say the biggest thing is to just never give up. You know, one of the things we didn't really get into in this episode, it sounded all like roses, but it's kind of like uh, there's poop in the room, and I spilled a bunch. Of, I sprayed a bunch of poopery in this episode, right? I mean, there's a lot of there's <laughs> a lot of away without touching the, the, the yeah things down. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's it's not easy, you know. And there was several moments through all of this where the average person, rightfully, break or break. By, by yeah, the way, would have gave gave up. I mean, it takes some insanity to to do some of this. You have to have the ability to run into a fire and disregard all common sense at some level to be able to, to, to get through the hard times. And there were several of them along the way, both in the poker times and the affiliate times and in e-commerce, like all three of those generations of, of my life have come with some really horrible moments that the average person would, and it, I will admit it gets tougher and tougher to, to keep doing that. Um, you know, as I get older, it takes a toll. Um, it takes a certain toll on the character of, of a human to endure this endurance that you need to, to stay successful in business when you're an entrepreneur, but uh, the key uh, factor for this endurance, as you're saying, as far as I yeah. understand, is don't give up, uh, yeah. you know, at least when you're in those you know, hard I, moments. I look back and I, I realize now that, you know, the, all the successes came like just after the moment where it was the darkest, right? It's just, it, and, and I, I don't want to, you know, convince somebody that they should continue on something that is a clear failure. Like, I mean, sometimes you have to know when the, to jettison. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to quit a few things, not the whole mission, not the whole right. purpose, but you know, things you're trying along the way, you know, you're going to fail. And if, but you, if, you, fail, if sometimes... you believe in something and, and knowing your heart that it's going to work and you've got to, yeah, I just lost a bunch of money or time, or like I worked all this thinking that this thing I was going to do was going to be the big win. And I, fuck, it's just, you know, it's like, man, I feel like this is awful you got to figure out a way to pick yourself up and put that same effort into the next thing. And keep you, going, just you, keep going. You know, keep yeah. going. If you yeah. feel like you, you have something again, at some point, you know, the harder part of the conversation is when, when you give up, but the inspirational thing is, I think you gotta, you gotta fight through it and you gotta learn a way to fight through it. And if you don't have the ability to do that, then you should go back and find another job. And I'm not saying that in a mean way by any stretch of the imagination, because yeah, do your best. Don't yeah. worry about it. If you, you really, truly do your best and you give up, that's fine. As long as you do your best. Exactly. Because if, you, if you don't, you're going to say, oh, I could have done better. That's an issue later on. 100%. Yep. All right, beautiful. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope everybody else enjoyed. Um, you know, stay safe and healthy. Until the next time. Take care, everybody. Take care, you guys. Bye.